Hi there. I am here alone at the moment. I'm going to give it a few minutes and see if Bridget is coming tonight. Um, and then I think uh, I think that's all we're going to have. So I'm going to mute for a minute, and I'll be right back. Okay, still waiting. Over here on Facebook, see if I have any messages. Okay, well, Geo is uh, usually a few minutes, running a few minutes behind. So let me go ahead and say that uh, we are currently focused on this book, but welcome to the Global Black Feminist Reading Circle. Uh, this session, we're reading The Disordered Cosmos. A journey into dark matter, space time, and dreams deferred by Shonda Prescott Weinstein, um, a professor of uh, theoretical physics. And uh, tonight we're on chapter five physics of melanin. Um, the kind of the least visits there have been <laughs> thus far. Thus far. Uh, here's Gio. Okay. Uh, yeah, the first four chapters felt much more sciencey or uh, were. 
Hey, I'm just talking to myself. Hey, <laughs> hey it, it sounds like good company. So, <laughs> uh, how, how have you been? Uh, um, actually, I had a cold, you know. Uh, Vanita and I have always said, you know, whenever we take like long breaks, we both always get sick. Oh no! But this time we both got sick on a short break. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh no! Uh, yeah, so I'm just kind of getting over a cold, um, but I'm I'm okay. And um, um, and but Benita is still kind of struggling, so I think it's just gonna be us tonight, Gio. Okay, sounds like a short meeting. <laughs> <laughs> it could be, could be. And um, I also just saw a message from Karen where um, she's going to be dropping out of, the, of this book group. Aww. She said she loved, she loved this chapter. She loved, um, you know, the points that, that uh, Dr. Prescott is making about, about melanin, but she couldn't come to, and she was looking forward to, to having the conversation about melanin. Mm -hmm. um, but she's going to an event um, for one of her nieces this evening, a performance, I think. And then she says she's traveling a lot in um, mm -hmm. over the next few weeks. So she decided to drop out of this session. And, you know, and I don't know, Vanita, um, Anita has had a lot going on ever since we got started with this book. Uh, but she's trying to hang in there, but uh, don't be surprised. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, life don't happens. Don't be surprised. <laughs> you know, life, life happens. happens. Life happens. And so uh, you and I have done a book group together before. <laughs> <so>. Yes. Yes. <laughs> We can hold. We this know down. we can do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, but um, uh, you know, my lifestyle is just pretty, pretty um, tame at this point. So anyway, so when you when you came, I was talking to the screen and kind of doing the introductions um but i didn't say i'm michelle odom um doing my reading in brooklyn new york okay and Gio. and i'm georgette moses and i'm joining you from columbia south carolina and my book is digital <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So um, I was just telling the screen that this chapter was a lot less physics-y <laughs> than, the, than the previous four. Uh, we've started a new section uh, in the book. I think it's called The Physics of the Chosen Few. Um, and so, you know, um, but it was a lot easier, you know, to read and, uh, grasp. And so I hope, you know, I hope the rest of the book continues in this, this vein. Um, I was keeping up though. I was keeping up, Gio. <laughs> Yeah, I love the articles. But I you feel posted, like I, right? uh, I said I love the articles you posted. They helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you see that uh, video on neutrinos? 
I did. And I'm like, oh, my God, even this guy sounds frustrated with these particles. <laughs> I'm like, you know, <laughs> Yeah, the particles yeah, that yeah. do what they want that's what they should call them. <laughs> yeah but it really gave me a much better image of you know um and even though they're invisible i feel like i now see neutrinos everywhere <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah how you been I've been okay. Uh, been okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, boy, look, most of my time is spent <laughs> playing with my grandkids on Roblox, or I've discovered VR. Now, I don't remember if you remember when um, BJ talked about the Oculus way back when we had a book group back with her uh, when yeah. she was oh my god now I feel what she was saying I am hooked on a game oh wow <laughs> it's oh wow well, so is that is is that where you feel like you're inside of it or something yes it's so much the technology has improved so much I'm like okay this this could be something. They just need to make it a whole lot lighter because my old neck can't hit <laughs> the weight of it. Because it's like it's a big unit right in front. And it's my son's. And he bought two battery packs since we are now both playing the same game. And and, and I, I'm on it for like hours. And then he wants to play. <laughs> so, yeah, this is my Oh, thing. wow. Yeah. It's a it's called Beat Saber and it's to music, which is great because I like music. And I've lost two pounds. I'm like, okay, this could work. This could work. If my neck holds up. It, really? It, so it, that's like an exercise program? Well, it's just really a game, but I because I'm old. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually losing weight i'm sweating and because it's like you have two sabers and you're like hitting the lights to the music and as long as the music is, i like the song i do well and of course and i'm on the easy level oh, wow. i'm it it's just it's it's pretty fun it's pretty fun so and then they have this other okay, what's it called it's called beat saber on on the oculus so and he was trying to explain to me there are two other systems too that do the VR glasses, but they're exorbitantly priced. <laughs> uh, but I'm uh -huh. like, okay, well, I'm just happy with this and I'll try not to monopolize it from him. <laughs> but he plays a zombie game on it too. I'm not doing that. I don't want the zombies reaching out and touching me, okay? That's not working. <laughs> But it, it's cool right. if you if you ever get a chance to you. I think you'll like it. You know, I think you'll like it. Because at first I was like, how am I going to see? Okay. I wear glasses. And but you can adjust the lenses inside of it to match, you know, your whatever your eyesight is. So it's kind of cool. So, yeah, I've been I have a oh. kind of a, an obsessive personality. So this is. <laughs> this is what's happening with me <laughs> okay <laughs> okay 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 so and and you play also with your grandkids on it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. wow yeah it's fun okay. it's the future okay. and and relating that to this chapter suppose melanin they use melanin to create a computer chip that was even lighter. And then the Oculus could be just regular glasses on your head with some headphones <laughs> instead of this big contraption. Or, yeah. okay, well, that's, that's, I was thinking of something else, which is like a, a show I watch on Amazon called The Peripheral where they get play a game they play you know the computer games but they have the technology in their bodies so which i think is kind of like a holdover from some military thing that they in in the storyline right 
but hmm, people are thinking of these things. So why, you know, it just makes me think about, you know, melanin as a superconductor. Some uh -huh, stuff could uh -huh. happen, some, you know, in the right hands. <laughs> but right. Hmm. Right. But does it seem to you like I'm freezing? Uh not as much as before. Okay, say something now. Uh oh. Okay, um, no, you're good. Can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're, well, you were sounding a little bit slow to me. Now, I have already, let's see, I've been on here since about 540, and I've already shut, you know, been shut down and come back on. Well, <laughs> so oh, no. I'm hoping, yeah, I'm hoping that it, it did what it had to do. And, you know, I'll be here for a while, but you know how that goes. Okay, let's not press our luck. Let's get on um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got the agenda? I did. Mm -hmm. I did. Okay, you want to read the um, uh, the little bit of summary? Summary, sure. Chapter five of the Disordered Cosmos: A Journey into Dark Matter, Space Time, and Dreams Deferred by Shonda Prescott Weinstein. The Physics of Melanin leads a new section of the book, Phase 2, Physics and the Chosen Few, that considers what gets studied, how, and who gets to participate in the practice of modern science. Chapter 5 explores the differences in race as a social construct versus melanin as a physical priority. The author also reviews how some examples of how racism has functioned in science, such as the work of J. Marion Sims and the concept of eugenics, how it continues to influence modern medicine and scientific discovery, and how racism may dash the hopes of Afrofuturists by influencing the direction of future materials technology. For example, current research in melanin, increasingly popular in biophysics, is considering melanin's ability to serve as a superconductor of electricity and potential implications for green energy. Chanda Prescott Weinstein closes out this discussion by recalling the ancestors who made it possible for her to ask the questions she is now able to formulate. And at, at the top of that page, um, I didn't put any names in there, but do you know who those, what those images are? Oh, that's Thomas Jefferson and Sally Hemings, right? Yep. Okay. And the middle is supposed to be uh, what superconductors look like, like when the when the energy is being pushed around, it, it could lift that metal thing. I don't know. I was trying to get an image of, of what superconducting means. <laughs> okay, I get it. I get it. Yeah, I think. She, I, yep. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. that was cool. Yeah. All right, so since I have this open, I'll go ahead and read um, number one. Uh, six years after receiving a doctorate in theoretical physics, the author first asked herself, what is the physics behind melanin? A harsh moment for a scientist. Even when her doctor said it's harder for darker skinned people to get enough sun to produce vitamin D, the author did not ask about the physics of melanin. Is the author being too hard on herself for not asking about the physics of melanin earlier in her life? Uh, why or why, why not? And how much have we asked ourselves about the physics of melanin?
Those are good questions. So what do you think, Michelle? Um, well, I, yeah, I did feel like reading through that, that piece of it, that, um, that, that she was being hard on herself. I mean, I know she's a physicist and a scientist and, and it seems like that would be a natural question for a scientist, really any scientist, but I guess especially a physicist um, who, you know, whose job is to kind of figure out how things work. Um, it, it would seem to be a natural question, but, um, you know, but I think that, that, that we're, we're the culture around us just really doesn't encourage, you know, I mean, one, you're trying to stay alive, you know, if you have black skin, you, you know, you're worried about so many other things. Like she talks later in the book about um, what life might be like if we were in Princess Shuri's uh, in, uh, environment from Wakanda. Um, you know, and, and she says, you know, that's what the world would look like, you know, if, if we were in Wakanda, but, but America is what you get, you know, when you're not. So I'm just saying, I mean, I think the reality is we're in an environment <laughs> that, that really, um, discourages you from seeing anything positive about darker skin. Um, and so, you know, I think you first have to learn how to cope with that. And that's a whole, you know, a whole head trip before your mind would be free enough to get to a point where it was asking about the physics, you know. Um, um, of melanin. So I don't, you know, I mean, I don't think I'm sure I've never asked myself about the physics of melanin, but then as for all the questions that I come up with, and you know, I can come up with some questions. They're not physics questions. That's, you know, that that's just not how my brain works. That's, that's not the kind. So it's not surprising to me that I never asked myself that question um but I think she's being too hard on herself as a scientist for not asking that question earlier because at least she's asking it now that's right that counts a lot and yeah, that really counts hmm yeah you <laughs> my answers to that question really echo yours because she's in a position, right, in a, in a field where you have more successes by blending in, right? <laughs> right. So I would think that, and when you look at, you know, all of her degrees, I mean, did she have time to think about that? She was trying to get it in, boy. Right. She, she was. My goodness. So you and but you say something that is so beautiful and is not allowed just by regular people using their, you know, mental capacities on a daily basis, and that having your mind be free, right, to explore. And it starts from being a child. Mm -hmm. Right, you have to fit into these parameters, take these particular tests that will grade you and tell you what you're worth, how smart you are. Uh, it, you know, someone else's definition of intelligence. And so you don't really have a chance mm -hmm. unless your environment is conducive to that, you know, letting your brain just grow and reach, you know, naturally, intuitively. You don't have a chance to think about these things that we mm -hmm. 
people who just work nine to five or whatever, the 12 hour, 24 seven shifts, they're working, trying to survive, get a chance, you know, they don't right. have a chance to think about unless, you know, you're like, you're exceptional. You know, we do, we do have people historically who, you know, they're in that workforce, but were able, they, they had saw a problem and able to, you know, reach their mind around, well, how can I solve this problem? Right. And they were able mm -hmm. to do it mm -hmm. probably because they had that potential, but because, and they could have probably done so much more, created so many other inventions, right? But because they were locked in to, you know, that on the treadmill, on the hamster wheel, not able to do it. And so, right. and the other, the other part is that, well, why don't we ask? It's because we've always been given the excuse that, oh, well, the color of your skin, you know, it's genetic and, you know, it's about the sun and where you were, you know, your people were from. <laughs> so, you know, we assume, oh, this mm -hmm. is, just, you know, part of, you know, a, a physical, you know, it only has one purpose. That's all we've been told. And so, mm -hmm. you know, who's been curious because, the people who have the melanin have been, you know, dispossessed and disenfranchised. They don't have time to think about, well, what is beautiful about this? What is useful? Why is most of the world mm -hmm. have this, you know, a, a, you know, this characteristic? Um, it's not mm -hmm. just a, a, an anecdote. It is a system, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I loved her terminology. She said a bio, what did she call it? A bio, some, biometric something system. You know, it's a whole system. It's not just this one little piece, mm -hmm. this descriptive word. It's a whole system working throughout your whole body, doing things, helping you survive, mm -hmm. right? So. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, Vanita is here. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree, Judith. It's it's um um amazing, but you know, that's why I say my mind just doesn't go to physics questions. Where's Benita? Mm -hmm. I, I see her. her. You see her? I do. I couldn't resist when you were talking about Good. melanin. I was sitting oh. here sick. I'm sitting here dying. I'm sick, but I couldn't even oh, resist. I mean, yeah. And oh. I was wondering, I'm like, I can't resist. I got at least I always be quiet and listen. Okay. Well, I'm glad you came, even if you don't feel so well. Well, mm -hmm. it's interesting when you were talking about melanin and um should she be hard on herself because she didn't actually explore the physics of melanin earlier in, in her career? And no, mm -hmm. everything is about timing. I, 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 I do feel the same way you all feel. It's all about timing. In her career, she was, at the beginning, she was batting down so many other things. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. even trying to survive herself with melanin in her skin. I mean, yeah. But when you did talk about, have we ever thought about it ourselves? You know, when I first, when I first started thinking about the physics of melanin in your skin is when I got lupus because I'm super photosensitive and my melanin does not protect me from ultra UV rays. Oh. Wow. I still can't see Vanita. So that's when oh, I first. Now I do. Oh, what's the matter? Yeah. So <laughs> that's when I first thought. I know I couldn't resist. It's such an interesting oh. chapter in the conversation about melanin. And I was telling uh, Georgette that first of all, I don't agree she should be hard on herself, period. When she first got into Korea, she's trying to bat down all these things and everything that's going on. And, you know. And she did get to it, but it's, everything is timing. Right. It wasn't the right time at that point. Um, but melons, right. when I think about it, I was telling Georgia, I had when I got lupus and I became super photosensitive and I started looking into the physics of melanin, which my melanin does not protect me from UV rays at all. 
it goes right mm-hmm. through body. That's why, mm-hmm. you know, um, I, I'm at such disadvantage. But I did think that's when I did research with lupus. And that's mm-hmm. when, you know, mm-hmm. melanin, um, it doesn't protect me from anything. Period. Wow. Well, you don't so have a whole lot of it. Well, I, when I see Georgette, <laughs> you know what? The 20% that I have, I would think it would give me a little protection. I do care when I get out there in the summer, I used to. See, that's why that, I got the love of Georgette. I have to love her. Yes, you must. <laughs> I don't have a twist. Yeah, she's all I got. You all are all I have. I got two sisters. That 20% doesn't protect me. It used to, I thought, you know, before I got lupus, but now with being a super photosensitive, it does not protect me. It goes directly right through my flesh. It doesn't, you know, ultraviolet rays, um, it, my flesh absorbs it, which is that's why it's dangerous for me. Yeah. So that's yeah. why I got into the physics of melanin and how how important it actually is and the big role it plays in our bodies when your body does not protect you when you you have a certain illness. Mm-hmm. So interesting. Where is Michelle there? Recording stop. Does she leave? Michelle, you still there? Okay. She's back. Now you you know how this does. I think I'm gonna buy a um, iPad or something bef- before the summer is over, um, so I can kind of move around when I'm doing book group. Go to different locations, mm-hmm. and. You know, and that may help because I, I, I think it's something with my computer. I, I don't know. But I'm not losing the internet connection. Mm. You know, I mean, I think I could use better internet than I have, but the connection is not being lost. It's just that the Zoom is going out. So I think that it's something, I, you know, like we were talking about last week, my computer. 2017 and I guess that makes it you know like an antique yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. That's, it's, the computer itself probably is, it's, it's really um very 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 old yeah so I think I'm gonna get you know like an iPad that's what I'm for, mm-hmm. a little notebook or something yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, that could work. So anyway, so while while I'm still here, uh, <laughs> let's let's uh, let's look at the second question. Uh, Gio, you want to read that one? Sure. Let me share the screen. Uh, okay. Okay. You ready? Yep, I'm ready. Melanin's primary interaction with the visible spectrum is to absorb some of it and reflect the rest of it back. What color we see depends on the extent to which different colors in the visible spectrum are absorbed. To achieve the browns that we see when we look at the diverse skin colors that Black people come to <coughs> come in requires diverse levels of melanin. The more melanin, the more of the color spectrum is absorbed. But as we know, some of the darkest skinned people have blue undertones. This means that some blue light is not absorbed by their melanin, but rather is reflected back. Question A, how do you feel about your current skin tone? And B, after discussing some of the historical facts of racism, Dr. Prescott Weinstein gets into the physics of melanin. With what she has shared, if you had the chance to come back in a future life, 
What kind of melanin and how much of it would you choose and why? Okay. <laughs> well, my short answers are I'm heavy. <laughs> and and for B, since I believe in reincarnation, I've probably been all of the colors. <laughs> probably be some more. <laughs> <laughs> Only GL. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'm I'm happy too. I mean, the the lighting, uh, my lighting never gives you all a true um, a true picture of my skin tone. Um, not as dark as I look on the video. And if you were to see my naked breasts, they're not as dark <laughs> as the pieces that are not naked. <laughs> the world, that are naked now in the world. So, I, you know, I'm like a pan. My body is like a panda bear, you know. Um, <laughs> but um, I, I have always kind of liked my color. Because I like um kind of midway um, on the spectrum. So I feel like it's always given me some from insight from, from both sides of the spectrum. Um, and um, um, uh, yeah, you know, uh, uh, so I'm I'm happy. I think I would uh I think I would would choose this color again if I come back, Gio. <laughs> you muted. You muted, Vanita. I said, well, I think I would choose to be very, very dark if I came back. I've always had a, a, a affection for very, very dark people. I think they're among the black folks the most attractive. That's just a personal thing. Maybe I had a little fetish going on. But um, my grandma was very, was very dark skin, my mother's mother. And she had skin that looked like velvet. It didn't even look real. It was so mm -hmm. flawless. And so dark and so beautiful. It looked like velvet. It, it didn't, I remember sitting as little girls yeah. rubbing her hands, you know, just sitting there rubbing her hands. I was infatuated with the color of her skin because it was just so smooth. It wasn't a blemish or anything. It was just, everything was just, look like velvet. And I've always just like, I, I, I think some mm -hmm. of the most beautiful people in the world are the Sinhalese. So mm -hmm. I probably will come back, minus the racism that we face, it depends on if we have a, a better world. I will come back a very dark skinned person. I think they're beautiful. I think you see their features, their features are more pronounced. Um, I never found very fair people very attractive, especially very fair. It's kind of like there, like all the features kind of blend in, but very dark skinned women, it's just, everything is just put I'd be very dark skinned. I think I would wear that well. Mm -hmm. I think they're gorgeous. Mm -hmm. I really do. I think mm -hmm. they're absolutely mm -hmm. gorgeous in a world that's not prejudiced, mm -hmm. you know? Um, I have a dark skinned cousin. Most of my cousins are fair, much fairer than me. I'm probably one of the darkest people, cousins. I'm actually the darkest person in my family, but I have a cousin that's very dark and I always thought that she was the, the most beautiful among all my female cousins. But again, I have this mm -hmm. probably little, something going on. <laughs> you know? But that's okay. That's okay. You know what yeah. I'm curious to yeah. know? No, I, is that I, now that uh, you want, you go, you, you go ahead, okay. I'm curious to know no, now, that, now that now that we know that the melanin is conductive, right? Mm -hmm. And de depending on the according to this chapter, the water and content is whether people who are of the darker shades have. I don't know, some uh, an, an innate, a uh, better connection with the environment, right? With 
I guess you could say spiritual, you know, are they more spiritual? Do they feel a, a, a stronger connection to universal forces? I'm, I'm just very, now I want to know. Now I'm going to have to do, you know, some research because maybe that could explain some things <laughs> about what's going on on the planet, mm -hmm. what's been going on, right? Mm -hmm. the less melanin you have mm -hmm. maybe you have a your connection to you know the environment to other forces you know mm -hmm. the harmony of the universe where you're supposed to be what you're supposed to be doing is not as strong and so you are more easily taken off the path of what you should be doing to create, well, you know, help create harmony mm -hmm. in the in the universe. That's just my, that's just a hypothesis. Mm -hmm. I just you know, threw out there. Well, it's an interesting one. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Didn't I you say that. That, that the darker skin mm -hmm. tone people also depends on the tone of your dark skin, the depth, I should say, or the deepness of the dark. You can have a blue undertone. Mm -hmm. which reflects mm -hmm. some light. Now that may not be good for a lupus patient. I might not want to stand next to a person that has a blue undertone <laughs> and reflects them that some back to me. <laughs> and I'm out there stressed out. But that was oh, interesting. Okay. I never knew that. I just never even thought of it, much less knew it. Yeah. That with the blue undertone, and it depends on the darkness of the skin, the blue undertone, it can um, reflect light. Yeah, That's interesting, huh? it sure is, you know, absorbing and reflecting. Reflecting, and, yeah, light. Yeah. So it can come, you know, with the blue undertone and the darkness of the skin, it can absorb the vitamin D and, you know, and this comes from the sunlight and absorb the light without mm -hmm. as much damage as a fair skin person, but can also bounce it off. So mm -hmm. maybe that's why even during slavery, the darker skinned people might have fared better. I, I wouldn't have made it. I mean, it's, I wouldn't have made it, period. Well. You think about that hot sun, you know, beaming <laughs> down on you. No, I, I'm, I'm being realistic. I, I would no, I, I'm with you. I'm sorry. I wouldn't have made I it. I'm too soft. I I'm don't too know. Soft there. I'm not, I'm not built for that kind of work. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, really, That's why I, really. Yeah. yeah, that's why we was born in the area that we was born in, because we're not built for that kind of work. <laughs> nope. I'm I, I, you know, I, I admit had, it. You had to stay in the house, child. I had to be an indentured servant. <laughs> Slave. <or servant. laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't go out in the fields. I just wouldn't make it. But I don't know if, if they were more feeling because of the darker tone of their skins um, and absorbing more of its surroundings, because the Native Americans come in different skin tones and they're definitely in touch. These my great grandmother, she's a, a Cherokee Indian, but she's a fair skinned Cherokee Indian, but there's a ray of color in her family. My grandmother, my father's mother, my Nana, her mother. Yeah. And um, they were very close to the earth and all over the United States from one extreme to the next, you know, from, mm -hmm the Southern states to the Midwest, to California, you know, Mexicans are Indians, Native Americans. Right. That's the right. are. They just pushed them down at the bottom there. Yeah. So it's interesting. Never thought that deep about melanin. Mm. Yeah. And, and since you br brought up um, indigenous people, so they're maintaining the culture, right? So that's a thing that they feel like is important to who they mm -hmm. are as people. So they wouldn't let that go. They wouldn't let that go. <sighs> and, who, and for me, who could be more spiritual than Native Americans? Mm. Well. Hmm. So I don't know. I think the word, I think it's, it's great because as Black people, we have everything. So we have lots of spirits coming from all over, from Native Americans, from African heritage, from you name it, Asian, parts of Asia. You know, we have, we have a lot of it because yeah. of our mixed heritage. We have this spiritual thing from all over, from everywhere. Oh, that's so true. we're full of spirit, period. 
Because, I mean, if you think about it, we do. We have it coming from all over. So that also adds to our spirituality. Yeah. And and hopefully a tolerance for other people, you know, because we do have it have that connection. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I never understood colorism and it was a lot and it wasn't my family. I've heard people when I grew up say some things and other families too that would just curl your 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 hair. You know, you would just be like, and even as, as a child, didn't you, you'd be like, Mm. But I do remember colorism, a lot of it. At a certain period, yeah. it was like, yeah. Dinner Table Talk. Yeah. Yep, Dinner Table Talk. Mm-hmm. Can you all see me? But Melanie is no, it's very No, see your, your icon. No. Not you. Okay, and I can hear you, but I cannot see you. This is getting so much worse. Um, I think I'm going to probably order a computer, uh, iPad or something when I hang up tonight because it's been bad. This, this is like worse. This is the worst ever. I mean, I'm, I'm cutting off like every two or three minutes, it seems like. This is crazy. Um, I can see you all now. Can you see me now? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This this is this is crazy. Um, I was trying to save some money for a minute, but I guess you know it's not to be. <laughs> <laughs> you save money, Michelle. Uh huh? I said you save money, Michelle. Peter. <laughs> Your money's in the material. I was school. trying. I know, and I, I commend you. And I, trying yeah, is half of it, right? Yep, I commend you. Money. Apparently. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, uh oh. My internet connection is unstable again. Once I see that message, then it's getting ready to cut out. <laughs> it's getting ready to cut out. So. You're frozen, too. Um, You're freezing. Yeah. So, but anyway, let's let's look at another question. Let me see if I can read something real quick here mm -hmm. uh, before I before I get uh, kicked off. Uh, I'm just gonna go to number three. Uh, if I can move things around so I can see. These days, there's lots to talk about diversity in science or STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, as we broadly call it. But today, when I do talk about diversity in science, it is often in terms of the untapped resource that people of color represent. The National Science Foundation is charged with improving participation of underrepresented groups in science as a matter of national security, ensuring that the United States has a sufficient homegrown STEM workforce requires acknowledging that demographic changes are coming and the United States is at risk of being dependent on foreigners for its technological workforce. A, in some decades, it seemed US corporations were going out of their way to recruit and nurture foreign workforces into technology fields. What do you see as the potential risk of this recruitment strategy? Is there a role for the government to play in balancing recruitment of foreigners into technology fields versus nurturing a homegrown workforce? And if so, what might that look like? And C, COVID-19 showed us the ugly side of anti-science among some Americans. How might this impact developing a homegrown tech workforce? So Vanita, I guess you got a lot to say about that one. 
but you're muted. Wow. You're going to stay muted? I'm unmuted. Okay. I'm unmuted. Mm -hmm. So I'll just, I'll just say, you know, that, that whole theme in this chapter of what Black people can do for the nation. <laughs> Just put sent a just sent a chill down my spine. <laughs> and yeah. I imagine that the three of us as survivors of medical apartheid <laughs> we're having some mm -hmm. mad flashbacks. <laughs> when she started talking about J Mary and Sims, I was like, <laughs> I know. No. 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 <laughs> Mm. No, yeah. remember medical apartheid, Georgia? Yeah, I do. I do. Mm. Every time we I pass by the bush, the book on the shelf, I'm like, ooh. Yeah, me too. <laughs> and I'm right back to see it too. <laughs> it sure is. For real. And and we didn't did we finish the book? I don't think we finished. The yes, book. we did. We did. Okay, yes. I must have blacked it out of yes, my mind. You, 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 you blacked, blacked out. out. It was so long. Yeah. We all blacked out, but we finished it. <laughs> <laughs> that was a long book. We used to do that book for uh, four years, <laughs> at least four years. <laughs> 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 it felt long. It did much good. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Every time I see a doctor, remember Michelle, I was, I I asked, and you read a medical apartheid, and I go for the interview a doctor, a new a specialist, I let him know I read it. Make sure I put a bug in their ear. <laughs> That's Don't right. Try That's anything, right. Because I know all about that. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I'm not volunteering for anything. Don't even ask. Yeah, me but we know. Yeah. Lupus experimental programs. I get stuff in the mail all the time and emails about that. I'm like, bye, y'all. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to be a guinea pig. Well, a knowing guinea pig. Because you <laughs> if I hadn't met medical part time, I say, you know, I'll, I'll volunteer for a couple of trials, you know, so they can get some. But now, with after being a medical part time, I don't volunteer for any kind of trial. I'm just going to die with this lupus. That's fine. No problem. Keep it moving. So, anyways. Let's do it. Think, I will do it if it doesn't involve. You know, uh, um, taking any medication or needles or cutting, I'm not going to do anything like that. Most but, doesn't um, that. You know, if it's like a, it, but uh, well, I just I did one last year that was um, a survey kind of a thing, a and um, oh, you know what they did. They, yeah, they did take some blood though. Yeah, they have to always they do did. something. Oh. You trying to follow yeah. the total observative, yeah. observatory type of trial? No, they're gonna they're gonna stick you or take something from you or make you take some medication or something. Hmm. So there won't be a cure from lupus if you depend on Benita. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> And I applaud the rest of the folks to get out there. I did. You're, you're right. You're right. You're right. But, you know, I mean, you know, remember Harriet did change her tone I in that about. last chapter. And that's why I'm still not doing it. She changed her tone when we got to the very last chapter. She changed her tone when we got to the whole, no, girl. Mm -mm. Nope. You should have had that tone at the beginning. If you had the beginning, you changed at the end. I'm not trusting Harriet like that. <laughs> After the information, it's too late to say. It's but too by late the way, say, no. yeah. By the way, there could be good trials for the girl. No, yeah. no, you should said at the beginning. Too late at the end. I read too much. I know too much, and I'm scared now. So, put the fear in me. Well, that's yeah. That's 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 why you know what Shonda is talking about in this chapter um, is so scary because. Uh, uh, you know, if white folks have a need, uh, I mean, if 
people of high feel melanin have, have a need um, that we can fill. <laughs> You know, yeah, and, and you know, and they're trying to deal with this skin skin cancer uh, issue. Um, you know, I mean, I think before we get too nervous about it, melanin does exist. You know, in in almost in in almost every plant and animal from, yes, from what I could see. It's all over the place. That doesn't mean, you know, skin and black folks alive, you know, wouldn't be seen as the option of choice. Bad harm. Somebody might think it's a fun thing to do. Huh? I said it sounds like a bad horror movie. <laughs> it would be. Yeah. But, you know, the more, they turn to art- the more they turn to artificial intelligence, because that's all I'm hearing and reading now these days is about artificial intelligence. A lot of stuff is going to happen. It's going to happen. So get ready. You know, mm-hmm. and it's not going to necessarily be by choice, but artificial intelligence. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. already out of hand right now. I mean, mm-hmm. you have all you have a portal. Every doctor you go to, whether it's for a laboratory or whether it's for a specialist or primary dentist, you name it, they have portals now. And within those portals, it's a, a place where they store all the information about your medical care, race, creed, color. Probably how much melanin you got in your skin, or what you don't have in your skin, what medication. And who you're and having sex with. Oh. Say what? Oh, yeah, that's true. I said, yeah. and who you're having sex with. That's you know, right. I go see the pulmonologist. They want to know who you're fucking. But and I'm like, what kind of question is that? And it's like, a, and yes. You know, your yes, personal life. pronouns and, and your gender yeah. at birth and what's your current gender. Yeah, all my doctors are asking those kind of questions. Well, I look at it as one big, large yeah. spreadsheet. I look at it as one big, large Excel spreadsheet. And with artificial mm-hmm. intelligence, which I believe ultimately the goal is to, you know, those will be the people that are overseeing us. And the rest they're going to get rid of. And it's just like a sell sheet. They'll go down there and put them in categories. Just like that. A push of a button. Bam. And they'll be able to experiment on folks without them knowing it. Once you go to the doctor and he had that computer in front of his face. And you can't see what he's looking at. And he'll push a button. And you'll think you're getting a, this a urine test. But within that urine test. There's going to be a whole lot of other stuff. And I think it's going to get bigger and bigger and on and on without you even knowing it. Mm. And they will make a decision um, who who they want, who they need, which they won't need many of us. Well, I'll be dead, hopefully. Um, But they won't need need many of us. And that's the way it's going to be. It's like technology. Same with technology. How can you train Americans to be more technologically savvy? First, stop oppressing women for STEM, which is why that's why so many young women in our era had a fear of math. You know, mm-hmm. scientists are steered. You'll take English right. and you'll speak proper English and cross your legs and look cute. Um, it's too late for that now. It really is too late. Other, there are a lot of the countries that were not retarding the education of women, young girls, as far as math and science and STEM is concerned. Um, a good example is Asia, South India. They're importing them left and right. Now the corporations can sponsor them with an HB1 visa, opposed to private sponsors. They changed that law so a corporation would be the sponsor, which means they hold it. And if you move the wrong way, they'll pull it back. 
Meanwhile, there's no need. We missed that window. We missed that window because now you have, they're importing Asians by the tons for technology. Wow. Why bother? Actually, they're importing Asians. It started with Intel, with Intel about 15 years ago. They had 20 mm-hmm. something white technologists, technology males making mm-hmm. good money, train Asians once the corporation were able to sponsor themselves and told them, you're going to train them for your job because wow. you're not going to have one in a minute. And it started with Intel. And ever since then, it, they, it has sped up like the speed of lightning. And you cannot run out of an Asian of any kind. <laughs> Indeed, I know you did say that. <laughs> what, what I'm saying is that, they, that I'm, not, I'm not saying to be insulting. They, it's a big population of people. Yeah. It's not, we, we don't have that many of us here. You know, we are a minority. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? And even white of uh, 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 Anglo-Saxon, Caucasian, AKA, whatever it is for now, you know, you want to call them. Even there's a the minority, but Asian countries, I'm not saying mm-hmm. to be insulting, you cannot run out of the people, the population of them alone. Well, the question is, do they that. have the, right, right. The question would be then, do they have the knowledge base to move into these fields? And, well, gee, I mean, AI is on a track to just make human beings, period, obsolete, right? <laughs> and until they do, both Black and white folks going to be obsolete. Well, until they do, that's what I'm saying. Until they do, we're going to be obsolete. And then when they, get, when they have enough of the knowledge they need obtained through AI, then they'll be obsolete. But right now, that's the new form of modern slavery. Hmm. As far as paying everything else, as far as I got that visa in my hand, you're going to do it how I want to do it. You're going to accept this. So I'll pull it back. Think about it. Hmm. And they'll say next <laughs> because you can't run out of them. Wow. Think about it. It's like a pipeline. It's a constant pipeline, a constant pipeline of people that are trained hmm. They'll be more than willing because they can't. They can't get a job there. A lot of job, you know, jobs are really hard because of the population of people. So they're gonna. And I'm seeing it. I'm seeing the landscape change. Like it's like done a total flip flop in the last ten years. Wow. Why do you think mm. Silicon Valley? They did. Everybody's losing their mind. Why do you think they had mm. that that crazy clown insurrection up there? <laughs> As I'm gonna think about it. Ah, <laughs> it's well. this clownish. I had I don't mean to laugh. I shouldn't do that because I don't know who's watching. It was a terrible thing, but it was funny as hell when I sat there and watched these fools. It's like yeah. watching a cartoon because they're it, angry. It was like a movie, right? Like Something movie. you wouldn't expect to see on regular in normal right. life. <laughs> and the way they and the way the things were done and make it look cartoonish. It just yeah. looked cartoonish, but. That's why they're doing what they're doing, why there's the middle class and upper middle class white man is so angry. They're super, super angry. It's the wars between the middle class white man and the elites it has nothing to do with me, you, or the Asians coming. Hmm. Nothing to do with us. The fight is not about us. That's the war. Because you got to remember, they were promised they would get to the next level. They were promised that, and they'll be higher. They will always be higher than the highest brown person. And it's not turned out like that. Not when corporate have changed the laws, they make them, they change them. The lobbyists get out there, they're all in Washington. They change the laws, they can you know, sponsor by the thousands. Because they're only supposed to be used for emergency purposes. That was the reason for them. But now it's just used to keep the pipeline going. So that's who the fight's mm-hmm. between. It has nothing to do with me and you. It's between the middle class white man and the elitist white man because the least white man promised him if you keep your head down and get through the transaction, I got your back and you will get to the next level. And it didn't happen. No, I'm not trying to <laughs> I mean, you know, if you want me, I guess I should be a little more scholarly, but that's basically what it came down to. If you just chill, fall back, 
I got you. And you'll get to that next level. You'll yeah. get that BMW 733 IE series. Don't worry about it. And now it's changing. So they're angry. Yep. That's true. And and are unfortunately willing to believe just about anything created on the internet as fact. anything. Okay. Anything. <laughs> anything. Mm. Wow. Well, if we can survive this lapse in IQ, mm -hmm. <laughs> emotional and otherwise. I think we're doing pretty good. <laughs> At least I, I think three of us are. I can't speak for everybody because, but I think I think if you can survive this, the mental part of this, because that's where the actually the whooping came from. It's not physical now. It's a mental game. It's a yeah. mental warfare, which is worse to me. Because yeah. you can't escape your mind. You know, you hit a person, you beat a person, a sting, you know what I'm saying? But the mind is there every day, all day long. So it is a mental warfare. That's true. Yeah. It's almost, you know, so it's just, you know, whatever. Keep reading. Together. Yes. And yeah, it's it's yourself. <laughs> Slow. Slow. I know I'm going shopping tonight. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You, you're mad as heck and you're not taking it I anymore, get, Michelle. Me, <laughs> yeah. I can't I can't. This this is this is really bad. Do you um do zoom for your iPad, Vanita? Yes. You might want to get a large one. I have the iPad mini. Um, they're more expensive, but the iPad, the regular iPad is larger. And um, the, the generations they have out now, you can actually get a separate keyboard if you wanted to type something or do your work. Hmm. Cool. So you can get a one by Apple or you can get one by Samsung. They have a, a, uh -huh. a nice, you know, tablet or iPad or, or pad, not iPads, but a pad. Um, they got nice uh -huh. ones too. Um, the larger ones, you can always catch them on sale. You know, they have certain sales. So you might not necessarily want to buy it tonight, check for the sales, because, you know, get a hundred off or something like that. Yeah, it's more Memorial Day, so. Yeah, the weekend. There should be so, something. Mm -hmm. There should be something, like a Best Buys or something. They always mm -hmm. have those specials. You know, so check it out this weekend. That's right, you the sales. $100 is a mm -hmm. lot off of uh, anything. It sure is. That's your tax. <laughs> That's your tax. Thank you. That's how I look at it. That's the tax. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Hmm. Well, I, I don't know if we're going to get through. We have, what, three more questions? She only wrote five tonight. Uh, six. Not with this. Can y'all hear me? We can hear yes. you now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why don't you go ahead and you know get through as much as, as you want to? Um, I am going to get off because it, it's you know it's really um, this is crazy. <laughs> This is crazy, and I'm I'm gonna go shopping now. Um, yeah, I'm gonna leave now because I it, it's not even letting me stay on long enough to get through a single question. I've never seen it this bad. I don't know what's you know what's going on, but I think I just need to go shopping, and you know come back next week with a, a new piece of equipment because this one is done. Okay, well, how about this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's up to you, Vanessa. So, yeah, we you can know. Just in now and then next we, week we can pick we can up whatever done. questions here. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. And, yeah, we don't want know. to be here without you, so we can just end okay. it and walk down and pick up where we left off and start the new chapter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 
That was an okay. Okay. No. That was an okay. <laughs> <laughs> Stop, Gio. Right, you make me howl over here, girl. You know, I'm I'm sick, but I needed this to perk me up. I love oh, it. Oh, that's good. I hope you feel better. It's you just know, some crazy. You... Thing. It's what the you know, certain times of the year, your allergens, you know, your body takes and everything. Mine can't tell what's what. Mm-hmm. But it usually happens the first week in April. It's not as bad as this, but this is some ferocious allergens out there now, and it's like a month late. Oh, wow. And my doctor said, that, you know, my rheumatoid doctor said, everybody's sick. He said, I knew, you know, that, that my office would be full because people are sick and don't even have allergies. That's how wow. bad it is here. That mm-hmm. makes you Carl- wonder what is Carl- really Carl- going on out there. Carl- Carl- said, yeah, I've called my son. My husband is like, it helps the horse. Mm-hmm. He never has allergy problems. And everybody in this job is sick. So wow. mine turned into an upper respiratory infection because with lupus, oh. it turned... Yeah, I've had pneumonia a couple of times, but I catch it quick. I catch it before it comes. Because with me, it turn, it can, in 24 hours, it can turn to crazy. You know, you get oh, bacterial wow. infection from the... Remember, my body doesn't... It can't tell. Yeah. If I prick myself, it can't tell it's just a prick. It starts attacking everything because it cannot distinguish. So with these allergens, as bad as they are, it's like, you know, it's a lot of things comes along with you. My jaws are swollen. I had to get a muscle relaxed because it started attacking my arm oh. because it doesn't know what to make of everything. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it started talking, attacking your joints. And, and then again, um, then the, this year, this, this allergist turned to a bacterial infection. It's like oh. that. So I had to go to Okay, the let me, uh, hold on. I just want to stop the live stream, um, yeah, Anita. And...